Welcome back. That unfamiliar sunshine, which we haven't had in a while. Last video, I was moaning because the radiator, after I'd fitted it and refilled, uh, started leaking. Over here, we have a triple core Rover SD1 radiator. <clears throat> That was actually earmarked for my twin plenum Vitesse. It's got the same side tanks as a standard radiator and all the correct fittings for a manual V8. But you'll notice the core on this one is quite narrow. It's just a twin core. So between the side tanks, there are just two galleries in the cross section one front one back this thing has three so I don't know whether uh, you'll be able to see <clears throat> but you can actually see or I can I don't know whether you can three little ports in there so you've got a third as much again coolant circulating so theoretically it will have a lot more heat capacity shouldn't get hot should get cooler happy engine so first job pull the radiator out fit that one button that all down start filling up with coolant then last time i was fanning around for making a new brake line because the one that goes across the bulkhead from the brake proportioning valve to this caliper had failed so get that in there i still haven't got the correct fuel union to connect this to there um, well, I can connect that bit, but what I can't do is join this piece of plastic pipe to that piece of plastic pipe. So it'll work as a jury rig temporary thing, but um, long term, I'll need a better connector down there. But anyway, I'm going to get on, pull that radiator, refit the new one. A new and irritating problem has just manifest itself. This radiator is a little bit chunkier and doesn't want to sit back far enough to sit in the mounts because this aftermarket oil cooler is in the way what I'm gonna do unbolt the oil cooler from the bracket unbolt the bracket from the rad support turn it around the other way and that should move it all forward and then put it all back together again uh, and then we should be looking close new triple core radiator fitted oil cooler has been switched round so it now sits in nicely all buttoned down now i'm just going to continue buttoning down the cooling stuff wiring and looking to try and get it to fire up radiator in coolant in uh, most of the cooling line is done up i've put all the earths on with copper slip and special bolts which have like a um, helical groove cut in them so that they bite in so they're good for earths need to do up that hose over there but I was going to leave it and burp it a bit more to get the coolant out I've been trying to address some of the wiring issues and there are quite a few the car had a race style cutoff switch which was mounted up here and in order to install it they had messed around with the loom at the battery end and then made up a pair of tea leads from the alternator and starter up to this as well so all a bit of a mess for the moment, just to get this thing started, I'm going to jury rig it, but, oh, that's really annoying. Uh, one of the issues I have is that on the Rover SD1, the main power from the battery into the car body and loom is through that there. It should be about this long and it should go right the way through the battery terminal. And this does two jobs. It's actually attaching the loom to the battery terminal but also acts as the clamp bolt and the problem is people wang them up really tight they stretch them and eventually they snap them which is what's happened here so that is dotty's original uh well not original original but the one that was on the car it's one of those secure um lock ones so you bolt all your wires to here and then that undoes and you take it away with you as a security measure um, so in order to join all this lot together just as a temporary um, fix and this is a bit of a bodge I'm just going to make my own little power distribution bar which will pick up on this that will pick up on there and then also on that terminal we should be good it's a horrific bodge but it is only a temporary bodge and once I've got more time 
I can cut these, terminate them properly with proper crimps, and then buy a new proper 12 volt um, positive terminal, and that can go back on it. It'll all be done nicely. Um, but just to get it up and running, because I'm sick of looking at it and not moving it around and driving it, I'm going to do this. <coughs> Right, everything I think that needs to be terminated is now terminated. I've got my battery terminal very loosely on there. That is not a very good fit on this battery anyway, so there's something wrong with this whole system. So that will all have to be done nicely. Um, but I do just want to crank it and make sure that it's going to turn. Um, then I'll do some other checks. Um, check that the oil pressure warning light is working the series one cars that down there is the oil pressure switch and the pressure switch actually controls the pump so the fuel pump won't shoot fuel until it gets oil pressure so i've left that off at the moment and i'm going to direct it with a bit of hose into a bucket so it doesn't shoot fuel everywhere but that'll be my key um, to know whether i've got oil pressure and whether or not the um, fuel pump's actually switching on or not I still get butterflies whenever I do this sort of thing. I really don't know why. It was a running engine, it should still be a running engine. The body shop disconnected lots of bits, but I've reconnected lots of bits and we should be good to go. So, tactically placed fuel collection device. And we shall see what happens at the moment, not a lot. Oh, right, okay, it's turning the key the wrong way. Right, so that's ignition on. Can't see any warning lights though. Ah, right, coolant warning level. I'm just going to crank it a few times. I don't want to burn the starter. And we'll go and check periodically to see what's happening with the fuel and whether the fuel pump's switching on. doesn't smell particularly fuel -y. no it's dry at the moment so either it's not got sufficient oil pressure to switch the pump on or that circuit's not working I can't remember how I oh yeah it was running off at a jerry can wasn't it so I never actually checked the pump wiring so it could be that switch is duff it could be just haven't got oil pressure yet or it could be that the pump's not wired up right but um, we shall work through this and see what happens well rather annoyingly I'm not getting oil pressure I don't think because the pump isn't switching on and um, the gauge isn't moving it's possible that this is a wiring issue that something's not plugged in right um, I'm going to go and get a, another battery and jump the pump and check that the pump is capable of working if it is then it's the signal from the pump in which case it's either switch or it genuinely isn't getting pressure so um, I'm going to fiddle around for a little bit while I've pulled out the wiring diagram just to remind myself that is the oil pressure switch uh, and that is the fuel pump and WP is white purple so theoretically if the pump is earthed in the back all I need to do is give power to the white purple wire with my power probe off the battery and then hopefully I should hear or see the pump work um, one thing that has occurred to me is that this has that um, spark right a car alarm thing whether that's an immobilizer as well I don't know but I've never really looked into it and I've never really bottomed it out so it might be that that is interrupting either the spark or the fuel when it works um, so that's another possibility for the fuel pump not coming on uh, I still need to work out whether that's a false gauge that I'm getting saying no oil pressure or whether um, that's real but anyway we shall get there in the end i'm sure i don't actually know whether i'm going to be able to film this as well as do it but basically i've got my power probe in the white purple down there and when i press the trigger button which i can't do one-handed hold on basically i can hear the pump operating so that tells me that the power potential out of that line is okay. I now just need to check that it's, um, well, I need to work out whether it's not running the pump because the engine hasn't got oil pressure and the switch hasn't closed or whether it's because 
of a power to that system not working so a um, little bit more to do either way I'm going to keep purging the fuel into that bottle to get rid of any dregs that are in the line well, this is annoying despite having run that pump for quite a long time and I can hear it operating I'm not getting anything out of this line which is weird because those pumps should kick out quite a lot so I'm starting to wonder if that pump is wired in right so I'm going to crack the union there and see what happens. Right, I've just cracked that and pumped it again. And there's definitely fuel coming out of there. It's just not getting to the engine bay yet. So I'm going to put the um, fuel tank, improvised fuel tank under the car and see if it's a gravity thing. I don't think it should be. If the pump's pumping out of there, it should be pumping straight through here. Um, we, I can only assume it's just taking a while, but we'll persevere. Goddamn cars. This should be so easy. Right, if I jump the pump, the pump works. Fuel is out of the top there. If I undo that there nozzle, I can blow through it. There's quite a lot of resistance, but I can blow through it and the fuel comes out this end. I took that off in case I had accidentally crushed the pipe. And to check I can blow through that, which I can. So why does fuel not get pumped from there to here in what is an uncrushed, undamaged piece of plastic pipe? I'm very, very confused, but basically no fuel is coming out yet, so I'm going to do some more head scratching. This genuinely makes no sense. That is the fuel line pulled off the underside of the car. You can blow through it fine. I think that might be a crap pump and it's just too weedy for the job. Made a discovery. I'm now jumping direct off the pump so I can watch the, the line at the same time. Pump running, I can hear it. Nothing coming out now whatsoever. So, um, basically, pump's gonna have to come out, which is a complete ask because now the tank's in the car, you can do it, but it's a bit of a bitch and uh, we'll see what's going on but it's rather irritating to say the least that'd be why it's not working then the elbow had fractured the last bit of it fell off just as i was lifting the pump out of the tank that grime you see there is not from inside the tank that is the remains of the butyl sealer that i put under the top um, but anyway I need to go and find a piece of pipe, put that around there, a couple of clips, put it all back together again. That part of the car will be working. I still need to work out the oil pressure side and spark and all the kind of other boring bits that you need in order to get a car to work. Ugh, exhausting. Some cars just don't want to be saved and to go back together. I've put a new piece of fuel pipe in here with clips so it can't come off. I was slightly concerned that the radius of curvature there was going to flatten the pipe and then it wasn't going to work but this is the same hose out the same reel and I blow for it works fine so we should be good to go again um, it's annoying but it's all part of the job I guess although this isn't a job it should be a hobby it should be fun it is not right now anyway put that back in balance it in there jump it again make sure I get fuel out and do it in stages put it all back together again I think I now understand how this got knackered last time to get this back in the tank it is an extremely tight fit and at the moment that cable tie uh, sorry that clip is stopping me from getting in there I think what must have happened is either me or whoever was helping me pushed that in and it cracked it and that's what's done it so um, I've got to Undo that, rotate it around so it's out of the way, try it again, get it back together. Power probe poking again before I bolt it all in. There we go. Right. Happy days. Well, praise the Lord. Got fuel. <clears throat> it's all back together again. I have just run that and I did get fuel, which is good. So line is purged, everything's back together. That can go on here. That little clip can go back on. And then I can work through the oil pressure side of things. Great success. She's a runner. Yippee! 
Ooh, mild excitement. I pulled that cam cover off and wanted to double check I was actually getting oil coming out through the rockers. And um, basically that alarm ain't working, so. Off the key. Definitely getting oil out of the pedestals. So. It's definitely coming out. Yeah, so it's actually, it's definitely getting oil pressure. I think the only reason it's not showing up is because the gauge must be knackered or the um, actual sender itself. I put my finger on the sender under the car. Hold on, I'll just turn it off. If I put my finger on the sender, where are we? Up here, this one, the hole thing is loose the little terminal on it so I think we've just got a duff sender uh, or switch or whatever it is I can't remember on these whether, whether the that's a combined yeah there should be a switch like just an on off light somewhere and then there should be a separate sender for the gauge unless it's all done through that but I don't think it is so maybe I'm missing an oil light I don't know I thought I had one Anyway, uh, engine runs. I'm pretty confident it's getting oil pressure because it probably would have seized by now if it wasn't. Ugh. And um, yeah, she is showing willing to actually run. Yeah, you don't get oil coming out of it like that if you haven't got oil pressure. So uh, I'm going to put my new um, cam cover gaskets on, rocker cover gaskets, because these were an emergency spare pair because I didn't want to reuse the cork ones. But um, they I thought they were fine and then uh, somewhere I mean they probably are fine but I've got new ones now so I will at some point swap them over oh, well that's a relief well that's not at all annoying I went in for a cup of tea and some lunch and it absolutely pissed it down and then it's bright blue sunshine again um so good job I put the cam cover back on the new gaskets are here and they're much more supple much nicer than the old ones so they'll get put on only annoying is uh i've of course put that fuel line back in and it's a bit of an ass to get that rocket on and off with that there so i'll have to dismantle that again but um you know never mind so weather it's really getting on my tits now um i've got the cam cover gaskets changed I didn't have to take them all the way off. I could actually thread the new gasket right the way around and put them on. Putting the air boxes in and I'm realizing I'm missing a couple of breather pipes. Shouldn't matter. It'll just probably be getting a bit more air than it should, <clears throat> but it was idling fine previously. So it, it, it'll be enough for chunting around. Don't mind working on the odd shower, but this is just stupid. So I'm going to down tools and have another cup of tea, I think, because it's just silly. I'm gonna need to move that. Well, that's actually mildly successful. Running, moving car on the ground. It looks really high, but I'm hoping that when it's driven forwards and backwards a bit and settled, that the rider height will come down because it looks like it's on stilts at the moment, which is a bit odd. Series one cars, I don't know. They do sometimes look a bit gappy, but not quite like that. So uh, something else to play with.